Hello. We will be using Noon Setting Daily Prayer, page 296 in the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and you hear, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. You will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and, and will be forever. Amen. We will be using Psalm 132. Psalm 132. Remember, O Lord, in David's favor all the hardships he endured, how he swore to the Lord, and bowed to the mighty one of Jacob. I will not enter my house or get into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Behold, we heard, we heard of it in Ephrathah. We, heard, we found it in the fields of Yahar. Let us go to his dwelling place. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, and go to your resting place, you and the ark of your might. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. For the sake of your servant David, do not turn away the face of your anointed one. The Lord swore to David a sure oath, from which you will not turn back. One of the sons of your body I will set on your throne. If your sons keep my covenants and my testimonies that I shall teach them, their sons also forever shall sit on your throne. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provisions. I will satisfy her poor with bread. Her priests I will clothe with salvation, and her saints will shout for joy. There I will make a horn to sprout for David. I have prepared a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but on him his crown will shine. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and is ever shall be. Amen. text for meditation is Revelation chapter 14 verses 1 to 5. This is following the casting out of the great dragon, uh, who is Satan, the great serpent Satan, casting him out from the heavens. Now he's upon the earth, and upon the earth he uh, welcomes the beast of the sea and the beast of the earth, who are representative of uh, corrupt political power and corrupt theological authority. Yeah, the, uh, basically, uh, those, the powers within the world, marking them for themselves. So, chapter 14, beginning at verse 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the sound of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the sound of harpers harping with their harps. And they sang, as it were, a new song before the seat, before the four living creatures and the elders. And no one could learn that song except the 144,000 who were redeemed from the earth. These are they who were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from mankind, being the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouths was found no guile, for they are without spot before the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So following the message of uh, the dragon and the two beasts, basically trying to corrupt all people and brand them with a mark so that they would be the only ones able to function in this world, because uh, those who bear the mark, they were the only ones who could uh, basically buy and sell goods, uh, the only ones who would be able to live in a functioning economy. 
or permitted to live in a functioning commune, actually. And there's always that concern, oh no, can, can, I act, can the beast uh, apply this mark to me? Well, no. And the answer in chapter 14. After we see the horrors upon the earth, we look to Mount Zion. We look to the where Jerusalem stands, the, uh, the, basically the foretaste of the Jerusalem to come. <laughs> uh, Jerusalem on earth was the city in which Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, was slain and where he rose and first proclaimed the message of his resurrection over the dead, conquering death, and by conquering death he also conquered sin, which is the source of death. So Jesus Christ on the worldly the Jerusalem, on Mount Zion, in which Jerusalem resides, that is where Jesus Christ broke sin and death for us. So with Christ, the Lamb of God, on Mount Zion, John sees 144,000. These are the 144,000 that came up, basically, at uh, the beginning of the chapter of Revelation, uh, uh, chapter 7 of Revelation. Uh, uh, in chapter 7, there were 144,000 sealed. Now, these are those who were sealed and still living upon the earth. So in chapter 7, John sees 144,000 sealed, uh, protected uh, within the earth, and then John looks into the sky, into the heavens, and sees uh, a whole bunch of people entering into heaven and standing before the throne. So John is basically witnessing the people who are transferring from the 144,000 here on the earth to stand before the throne. So with so when the 144,000 appear here in chapter 14, they are those who are the church. They are those who are sealed in the name of God. They have the seal, the mark of God written on their foreheads. And they cannot have the mark of the beast. They cannot be overcome by the sinfulness of the beast because Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, has conquered that already. Of course, if any of these try to rip off the mark, the mark of God from them, who are intentionally trying to uh, remove themselves from God and, and put themselves under the power of the beast, you can, you can fall away from the faith, but God himself has marked you as his own, and he will keep you in his grace. So what do these 144,000 do? Well, they just start singing. They start singing praises uh, concerning the Lamb, and, 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 and they're spreading this song throughout the earth. Now it says here that no one could learn that song except 144,000. And what that's basically referring to is those who do not, who are not enlightened by the Holy Spirit, those who have not received the mark of Christ, those who have not received the name of God written upon their foreheads, those who are not within the church and have been cleansed from sin, from death by our Lord Jesus Christ. They don't really understand the grace that God has given to us. Uh, Paul talks about this in the beginning of 1 Corinthians where he says, uh, those who have uh, those who are natural cannot understand the things of the Spirit, whereas only those who have the Spirit of God given to them can understand the things that are of God. Yes, because it's not the wisdom of this world that uh, these that uh, we in the church proclaim, but the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God can only truly be known by the Holy Spirit, and only the Holy Spirit can truly enlighten us as to uh, understand who God is. So when the church, the 144,000 on earth, when they start singing the praises of Jesus Christ, they are they're praising him. Hallelujah, Lord God, that you have saved us from our sins, from our deaths, and we are delivered from all the messiness 
of the world out there, all those who are trapped within the power of the beast and all those who are under the thrall of Satan himself. You have saved us from this sin, from this death, and we praise you for all that you have done and for us. I don't know the exact words of the song, and John does not really go into detail here, but that would be my guess as to what would be the content of the song. Now, the curious feature here would be those who, these who follow the Lamb wherever he goes, uh, they were not defiled by women, they were virgins. Right. And you have to go, well, that's a, that's a bit odd. Does that mean only men who are virgins are allowed inside the church? <laughs> and the obvious answer to that is no. <laughs> that's not what that means at all. Uh, God himself has sanctioned marriage for us, and if he's only uh, bringing in, if he's only, uh, he can only be accepted by virgins, well, then there's not going to be a next generation of the church. <laughs> so, God loves marriage, and he works within marriage. And the reason why we're talking about kind of a, a virginal status is because God is actually thinking about marriage in this passage. So, uh, we're thinking of being undefiled, uh, not committing adultery, not being in the sinfulness of the flesh, uh, being made clean and, and perfect before God as a, uh, uh, a virgin husband and a virgin bride would before her being married. So, this is in preparation for the marriage feast of the Lamb, uh, which we have in the new kingdoms and the new earth. Sorry, in the new uh, heavens and the new earth. This also seems to be running counter to um, uh, what comes up. We'll, when I'll talk about the next section here, where uh, fallen is Babylon and the great, and she made all nations drink the wine of her fornication. Now that mention, along with the whore of Babylon, who comes up in chapter 18. Uh, basically, what that is representing is the corruption upon the earth. Uh, basically, those who have not been, who are not living in an adulterous relationship with those who are under the beast, those who are, are with Satan. And you find this kind of language all over the Old Testament, really. Uh, the foremost would be in the book of Ezekiel. I'll look up that chapter for you as I try to describe it. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, uh, we have a very good representation of what this looks like, where those who have fallen away, uh, well, maybe, yeah, well, Israel is likened to a woman that God had is, uh, forgiven, cleansed, raised, fed, clothed, uh, he, he did all things for her. Yes, Ezekiel chapter 16. Chapter 16. Where Israel is seen as uh, perfectly prepared, perfectly uh, uh, provided for by our Lord. And God will wants to uh, marry this, this woman, Israel. And then, then he starts talking about well, then you began to whore yourself out to other nations. And not even being a proper whore, because instead of them paying you, you're paying them so that you could engage in sin. So the sexual uh, metaphor is used as one of uh, idolatry, going to other religions, being unfaithful to your husband, that is, being unfaithful to your God by going after other gods. So basically ruining whatever relationship you have as you might ruin a marriage relationship by committing adultery. That is the idea going on in, in Revelation chapter 14, that those who are within the church are undefiled by the sinfulness of the world 
And we know that we're undefiled by the sinfulness of the world because Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who stands with us on Mount Zion, very big metaphor, uh, basically standing on the mountain where Jesus was crucified for, for our sins and where he... Uh, and basically where he rose from the grave, and also where he ascended into heaven, as Jesus did all this around Jerusalem. Because of Jesus, we now stand as perfect before God, and ready for our marriage relationship with him, as the church is the marriage partner of God. We are the ones who are undefiled by the sinfulness of the world, because God himself has made us clean, and we are truly his protected from all the sinfulness of this world because of him. Amen. And continue with the service on page 296 with the Kyrie. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have marked us as your own in baptism when you placed your name upon us. We pray that you guard us against all sin and evil of this world, and that you deliver us unto eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, you have brought all people into your church to be a marriage bride, uh, to be uh, your bride. In, and uh, receive the marriage feast of the Lamb in the kingdom to come. Preserve us from sin, wash us clean from our sins, and always have us receive your grace so that we might not be found in the sinfulness, the idolatry, the adultery of this world, but always be cleansed and pure in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.